here at Oxley Creek Common uh, in Queensland, uh, bird watching with Hugh Possingham, and just had a fabulous morning bird watching. But this was very, you've been here for over 25 years, haven't you? And what's, what's it been, what was it like when you first came? Yeah, so when we first came to this place, which now has lots of trees and shrubs, um, it was flattened. So this was an experimental agricultural farm full of cattle. In fact, it was grazed down to the ground mm -hmm. and these paddocks were all bare. This was all bare. Maybe I can see one tree that was here 25 years ago. Oddly enough, yeah. there were hares here then. The hares have gone. <laughs> the hares liked it. All wow, the cattle. astonishing. And so you've been restoring it, but you've also been embedding experiments into practice. So tell us about how that worked That's and what right. you've learned. So we have a great bush care group which come here every Tuesday morning and they do three or four hours work. And they plant a lot and they weed a lot. But instead of weeding everything the same way, because I love the birds, I said to the bush care group, can we leave some patches of weeds? And initially they don't like that. Mm -hmm. So there's clumps of grasses over here, this big clump of grass. So over here that's, that's got... This okay. is all weed. Yeah, um, and, and that's all an invasive. But this is also finch food. So the double-barred finches and the red-browed firetails love the seeds of this, of this weed. And if we remove them all, they completely disappear. And we have brown quail in here. So a lot of the birds that we love live in the weedy patches. So instead of removing them all, you can see they've left at about eight, you know, eight metres of weeds here. And then this bit here, they've been planting up with native things and weeding. And this is a native enkelina. It's very difficult work because the weeds come up so quickly. And I can see some weeds here. So they'll come through and weed this again and make sure it's largely native. And there's little patches all the way along the river here. <clears throat> so we get that balance. And eventually, but it, might be 50 years time before we've fully made this a native ecosystem and the weeds are largely gone but it's 50 years rather than just nu nuking it and if you do that we've found that the bird density and diversity goes down about 20 percent oh, interesting so you've been but, you, but this is a uh, a replicated experiment and well designed even though it's a small scale that's right yeah, and there's and other bush care groups around the city and we've had other students look at them in small plots as well and show that the that if you just destroy all the weeds, you have a huge impact on small bird diversity. And then you've got another experiment over here, haven't you? That's right. This is more about different revegetation techniques. So uh, John Dwyer, who's at the University of Queensland, he wanted to test different kinds of restoration, one favouring early successional trees and one favouring late successional trees. Mm -hmm. So we got uh, eight one hectare plots set mm -hmm. out. And because we wanted to restore this whole corridor, this is Oxley Creek Corridor, it's a really important migratory corridor mm -hmm. for, for um, birds in this part of the world, we thought, well, instead of just putting in eight hectares of reveg, let's set it up as an experiment. So he's learned a lot by monitoring literally every individual plant, what sorts of restoration works. And he's also learned a lot about what sort of weeding around the plants works. So mm -hmm. he actually found that overweeding is often not good because the weeds provide a bit of protection for some of the late successional trees. I think he also showed that the early successional stage species are essential and you can't just skip a stage and go on to the late successional Definitely. stage. Definitely. Those, those later successional rainforesty plants, they need some shade. So ideally it's a matter of staggering it and trying to mimic the natural selection process and maybe trying to speed it up a little bit. Because ideally this would eventually slowly turn back into rainforest. At the moment the canopy is largely eucalypts and acacias, but eventually we can get more and more rainforest trees and they'll hopefully take over because so much of Brisbane was once rainforest. And this, this seems to be exactly what all restoration projects should do, but they so rarely do it. They so, so rarely have an idea to test uh, and have controls uh, and have replication. Why, why do you think that is? Well, people seem to have decided what's best. And so many of these people are very experienced and from their own personal experience, they've said this is the only way to do it. And they do it. And, and are they, they right? Well, they might be right, but we'll never know because okay. nobody's doing anything else. There's no controls and there's no other tests. And then usually I find in Australia, the bush care movement, after about 5, 10, 20 years, they suddenly change their ways and everybody changes. So that knowledge spreads quickly. And now, of course, there's no way of detecting the impact of the method against the general increases and declines across various bird species caused by other things like climate change. So if only they would try two or three different things in the yeah, same place, we yeah. could actually learn so much more quickly. Yeah, and that seems to be the key. That's the, the, the major problem, I think, for so much conservation. Yeah. We're not doing these small scale tests. Yeah. And as we've seen here, it, it needn't be elaborate. It could be quite easy to do. Do those small scale tests and embed them into practice and yeah. learn and then just do things better. Yeah, and keep monitoring for as long as possible before and after the tests. Yeah, yeah. visionary stuff.
It's great. Well, and, I, think and it's, I think it's first year science, Bill. It's first year science, but also it's almost never done. So it's kind of obvious, but visionary. And, and as you've seen today, just fabulous bird watching. Yes, it's, it's a beautiful spot. And I might also say first year science done by somebody who was trained as a mathematician and doesn't really understand science. <laughs> You're being modest as always. Thank you, Hugh. Thanks. Thanks, Bill.